What's going on everybody? I'm Johnny Brook. Welcome back to another Crafted Workshop video. Today's video, I'm gonna show you how to build this kind of small dresser or what we're gonna use it for, a changing table. So as you might know, my wife and I were expecting our first child and she had our son Monday morning. His name is John Alfred Brook the fifth. I'm the fourth, but we're calling him Johnny Five, which I think is just awesome. Everybody's happy and healthy, so really excited about that. And <laughs> this changing table has been working out really well. Probably changed close to 100 diapers on this thing already. And it's just been great. It's got tons of good storage. Uh, the changing pad fits perfect. Uh, this is a pretty standard pad, so this should work for just about anybody out there. And it's not too challenging of a build. It's pretty simple casework with rabbits and dados and a great kind of skill builder if you're looking to up your woodworking game. So I will have plans available for this project in case you're interested in building one of these for yourself. I'll have a link to those down in the video description below. But uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with the project. I started this project as I do with most of my projects, breaking down rough lumber, which was walnut in this case. I decided to use solid wood for this project, mostly just for a bit of a change of pace since I've been working with a lot of plywood here recently. I started at the miter saw, breaking down the boards into their final lengths. Next I moved over to the jointer, flattening one face and one edge of each board. With one face flattened, I moved to the planer and brought the other face into parallel with that flattened face. And I usually do this whole process at the jointer and planer in two stages allowing the wood to rest about a day or so between millings just to make sure it doesn't want to move after that final milling. Finally, I headed over to the table saw and ripped each board to final width. If you wanted to simplify this whole process, you could use plywood for the panels or buy pre-milled lumber. After milling, I arranged the boards into panels, laying them out in their final orientation based on any defects I wanted to hide or how the grain patterns of the individual boards flowed together. Next, I marked out locations for biscuits, which I used for alignment here. You could also use dominoes, dowels, splines, or any number of other alignment methods, but I went with biscuits on this project. With the locations laid out, I cut all the biscuit slots, making sure the biscuit joiner was well seated on the board each time. Next, I glued up all the panels, which went pretty smoothly since I had the biscuits for alignment. I still got a little bit of unevenness, probably due to the biscuit joiner being a little bit skewed when I was cutting the slots. I let the panels sit in the clamps for about an hour and then removed the clamps and scraped off any glue squeeze out. After letting the glue dry overnight, I ripped all the panels to their final width of 18 inches at the table saw. To smooth out some of that unevenness between the boards, I passed all the panels through my drum sander a few times just to get everything nice and flat. And at this point, I was basically to the point I would have been if I had started with plywood, so again, if you want to simplify things, use plywood. Next, I cut each of the panels to final length with my crosscut sled. First, I cut one panel to size, then marked the second panel based on that first panel to ensure they matched up perfectly. On cabinets like this, it doesn't typically matter exactly how big the cabinet carcasses end up. What's more important is that each matching piece is the exact same length so that things stay square. With the pieces cut to length, I swapped over to a dado stack on my table saw, setting it up for the final thickness of my panels, about three quarters of an inch. I set the height of the dado stack to half an inch and then set the fence so that it was just touching the blade. Also, I use a sacrificial fence when using my dado stack like this so that I don't damage my actual table saw fence and that fence is just a piece of scrap plywood. After doing a few test cuts to make sure everything was set up correctly, I started cutting the rabbits on the ends of the top and bottom panels. After cutting all the rabbits in the top and bottom panels, I moved the fence over and cut the dado for the center shelf into the side panels, first setting the height of the blade to 3 eighths of an inch. This height wasn't really super critical though, since I cut the shelf to final length after assembling the cabinet carcass later. With all the dados and rabbits cut, I could assemble the cabinet, which went pretty smoothly. I used a few corner clamps to make sure everything was nice and square, and then added basically all my clamps to tighten up all the rabbits. While I'm assembling, let's talk about one of the sponsors of this week's video, Powermatic, the gold standard. I added the Powermatic PM1500 bandsaw and PM2244 drum sander to my shop a few months ago, and they have been total game changers for my woodworking. The added power of the bandsaw and extra width and precision of the drum sander have been absolutely amazing, and I just know that these tools will last me for many, many years to come. To learn more about these machines and the rest of my Powermatic tools, check out the link in the video description below, and thanks to Powermatic for sponsoring this week's video. As I mentioned earlier, I didn't cut that center shelf to length until after the glue up, so next I measured that length and then cut the shelf to length with the crosscut sled. The fit was a little tight on the thickness of the shelf, so I sanded both ends off camera a little bit just to shave off a tiny bit of thickness, and then once the fit was right, I glued the shelf into place with a little bit of glue and a few clamps. 
When cutting the rabbets into the top and bottom panels, I made sure to cut them a little wider than they needed to be, just to make sure the panels were fully seated in the rabbets. So next I needed to flush up the ends of the top and bottom panels with the sides. I used my low angle block plane for this and it really was the perfect tool for the job. I made sure to work from each end, going towards the center of each panel and stopping in the middle. If I went all the way across the panel, the other end would have the tendency to chip out. And once the ends were flush, I added a slight chamfer to all the outside edges, again using my block plane. And there's just something extremely satisfying about this process. It's so much more enjoyable than using a router. And this is just a cheap Stanley block plane, nothing fancy. And I actually haven't even sharpened it and it's worked flawlessly out of the box. I'll have a link in the video description below in case you're interested. I wanted to add a little bit of reinforcement to the rabbits in the form of eighth inch brass pins, mostly just for looks really. I decided to create a little jig to make this process a little simpler. I measured the distance from the top corner to where I wanted the center of the pins, about three eighths of an inch, and marked the measurement on a scrap piece of plywood. I also marked the center of the piece of the plywood, both where I was drilling the hole as well as on the end of the piece. Next, I drilled an eighth inch hole through the plywood over the drill press just to make sure the hole was perfectly square. To complete the jig, I added another piece of plywood with some CA glue and added a few brad nails. To use the jig, I just hooked it over the corner of the cabinet and lined it up with the front edge of the cabinet. I then drilled a hole using the jig to ensure the hole was nice and square, and I drilled the hole about an inch and a quarter deep. Next, I marked the center of the side panel, aligned the center mark on the bottom edge of the jig with that center point, and drilled another hole. Finally, I repeated the process on the back edge of the cabinet and then repeated all those steps on all four corners of the cabinet. I bought this brass rod at my local home center and cut it into pieces using some pliers, although a hacksaw might have been a little bit easier. Brass is pretty soft, but it still took some force to make these cuts, but my pliers might have just been a little bit dull. Next, I roughed up the brass pieces using some 80 grit sandpaper so that the epoxy I used would have something to hold on to, and then I glued the pins in place with some five minute epoxy. I used acetone to clean up the excess epoxy and then let the epoxy dry for about 20 minutes. While the epoxy was drying, I worked on adding the back panel to the cabinet. First, I sanded the back edge to remove any glue squeeze out and then set up a half inch rabbiting bit in my router. I set the depth to match the half inch plywood I used for the back panel. And I only used half inch plywood because I had a scrap piece that was the perfect size for this, but quarter inch plywood would have been just fine here. Next, I went about the messy process of routing in the rabbit and make sure to wear some kind of dust mask if you're going to create rabbits in this way because dust gets everywhere and <laughs> I mean everywhere. I had walnut dust in my ears after this. After vacuuming up the ridiculous amount of dust, I cut the back panel to size over at the table saw and then cut the corners to fit the rounded corners left by the rabbiting bit. I cut the excess off with the jigsaw and then used the random orbit sander to smooth out the corners and this process only takes a few minutes and is a whole lot faster than trying to chisel out the corners of the rabbit. With the back panel cut to size, I attached it to the inside of the rabbit using wood glue and one inch brad nails. The epoxy was dry at this point, so I cut the brass pins flush with my flush trim saw, which cut right through the brass and then sanded it smooth with my random orbit sander. And the final look was really subtle, but I think it adds a lot to the final piece, both in the strength and the look. Finally, I filled any cracks or knots with wood filler and then sanded the whole cabinet up to 180 grit. With the cabinet done, I started working on the drawers and I've had this two foot by four foot piece of half inch thick walnut plywood hanging around for a while and it turned out that it was the exact size I needed for the two drawers on this piece. And when I say exact, I mean there was literally nothing left over but dust. It just worked out perfectly. I cut the drawer box pieces to size over the table saw and then swapped over to the crosscut sled to cut the rabbits into the ends of the drawer sides. And I've actually never assembled drawers using rabbits like this, but I really liked how easy it made the whole assembly process later. The rabbits were a quarter inch deep by half inch wide, and I probably should have switched back to my dado stack, but I was feeling a little bit lazy. Next, I cut quarter inch by quarter inch rabbits into the bottom edges of the drawer pieces to house the drawer bottom. After cutting all the rabbits, I dry fit the drawer box and measured the exact size for the drawer bottoms and then cut the pieces to size of the table saw out of quarter inch plywood. With all the pieces cut to size, I assembled the drawers using glue and three quarter inch brad nails. I used 14 inch full extension drawer slides for this build, which were actually left over for my assembly table project. And to install them, I used the Rockler drawer slide jig. Since I was using inset drawer fronts, I needed to offset the slides in the jig and I used an off cut of the drawer fronts themselves to set this offset. To install the drawer slide onto the cabinet, I clamped the slide and jig to the side of the cabinet 
pre-drilled a few holes using a self-centering drill bit, and then drove in a few screws. To install the other half of the slide onto the drawer, I marked out a few layout lines using a combination square, lined up the drawer slide, pre-drilled holes, and then added screws. After the hardware was installed, the drawers slid right into place and were spaced perfectly, although there was one thing I didn't account for when designing this project. Since the drawer pulls or the handles are kind of cut out of this right corner here, uh, that's gonna force you to kind of pull the drawer from that side. And as you can see, since this drawer is wider than it is deep, that causes the drawer to rack a little bit. Now it's not a huge deal, it's still gonna work, but what would work better is if I had two drawers on each side, so four total drawers, that that way they would be essentially just as wide as they were deep. Or the other option would be just to add the pole to either the center of the drawer or add two poles kind of, again, evenly spaced across the front of the drawer. But I think it's gonna be just fine. It's just something to consider if you wanna build something like this for yourself. All right, let's get back to it. With the drawers installed, I could make the drawer fronts, and I used rough poplar for this, but I'd probably use plywood or MDF if I were to do this again. The drawer fronts were eight and a half inches wide, which is just wider than my jointer, and this poplar was a little bit twisted, which ended up causing some issues. Anyway, I milled the rough lumber to size, cutting it to rough length at the miter saw, skip planing it at the planer, jointing one edge at the jointer, and then ripping it to final width at the table saw. Next, I marked out where the handle cutouts would be, and in case you're wondering, all of the exact measurements on all of this are in the plans, which I'll link to in the video description below. I cut the handle cutouts over at the bandsaw, first ripping the long edge of the handle, and if you don't have a bandsaw, a jigsaw would work just fine here. Before cutting the handle cutout to length, I remembered that I hadn't cut the drawer fronts themselves to final length, so I did that over at the miter saw. I cross cut the handle cutout to length of the bandsaw and then cleaned up the cutouts with a chisel for the inside corners and a card scraper for the flat areas over at the bench. And if you don't have a card scraper, I highly recommend getting one and learning how to use one properly. They make really quick work of tasks like this and are dirt cheap. Finally, I prepped the drawer front for paint, sanding it up to 180 grit and breaking all the edges. And while I'm sanding, let's talk about one of the sponsors of this week's video, Aero Fastener. Aero makes a wide variety of fastening tools, including staple guns, nailers, glue guns, riveters, and more. I used the Aero PT18G Brad Nailer and Aero Brad Nails in this build, and I have a ton of projects featuring Aero tools coming up, including some exclusive projects going up on the Aero site, so stay tuned for that. If you'd like to learn more about Aero and their full line of fastening tools and fasteners, check out the link in the video description below. After sanding, I sprayed on a few coats of flat white spray paint onto the drawer fronts. And also, if you guys have any recommendations on spray paint, I'm all ears. I usually use this stuff available at the home center and I've never been particularly satisfied with it. I don't like to use my HVLP system for paint since the cleanup is kind of a pain and I really don't paint that much. So I'd really rather find a better rattle can option. So let me know if you have any recommendations in the comments. For the finish on the cabinet and drawers, I used a wipe on poly, wiping on three coats with a cotton rag, and I just love the way those brass pins popped once I got the first coat of finish on there. The final bit of finishing to do was spray painting the hairpin legs I used for this project, and I went with gold on the legs, which I think played off the brass pins and matched up really nicely with the walnut. Once all the finishes dried, I could get the drawer fronts installed. I used the playing card trick to space them evenly, clamp them in place, and then added a few one inch screws through the inside of the drawer, making sure to pre-drill and countersink the holes first. Finally, I could install the hairpin legs. I marked in one inch from each side of the cabinet using a speed square, pre-drilled the holes, and then added the screws. With the legs added, the changing table was done. All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. I'm really happy with the way this one came together. I think all the design elements just really came together perfectly. The white drawer fronts, the brass pins, the gold hairpin legs, totally in that mid-century modern aesthetic, and I just love it. It's also functioning great as a changing table, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video. We've changed a bunch of diapers on this thing already, and it works great. So again, I do have plans available for this in case you're interested in building one of these for yourself. I'll have links to those down in the video description below. Also, I'll have links to all the materials and tools I use on this project, as well as a link to my Patreon page, which I'm revamping. We're gonna be putting out monthly kind of behind the scenes vlog style videos. I just kind of show in some of the day-to-day -day work that I do that doesn't make it into these project videos. So thanks again for all of your continued support and until next week, happy building.